going to do now is show you some of the oxy-fuel gas situations that can, can happen here. What we're going to have here is a setup where this will be an example of somebody doing some cutting. Uh, we've got oxyacetylene that we're using here, the standard two tank setup, regulators on the tanks. We also have safety devices on both the regulators to protect the source, and we will use in our setup here a safety device to protect behind the workpiece. What this setup is really going to show you is the typical oxy fuel gas setup using a torch, cutting onto a piece surface here. The way we have this set up, it's so that you can see what happens behind the workpiece in the line. So it would be anywhere behind the operation back to the source of supply. Again, we have the safety on the source of supply to protect that. The safety in this case behind the operator is going to be right here in our demonstration setup. Normally that would be on the torch, but in this case, in order to do this demonstration and supply the mixed gases, we have a situation here where we, we use the torch to supply the mixed gases and create a situation where you can look inside the line. But typically this would be any place behind the torch, from where the operator is all the way back, whether you have 10 feet of hose or 200 feet of hose. And it's I'm going to show you what happens when mixed gases get in the line. So we're going to use the torch to pass mixed gases through, we're going to create a situation at the workpiece that creates a flashback. When you have that situation happen, basically what you're having is conditions that allow the mixed gases to be ignited. Once the mixed gases are ignited, and when that happens, you hear a loud explosion. That is when the gases, the explosion is, is breaking the speed of sound. So you hear the, hear the sound, it travels that fast back, and there's nothing that you can do about it slowing that down without a safety device involved. So we're going to do three little demos here. One is going to be a situation where you just have the workpiece, the torch with no protection on it. That will be represented simply by this piece. The next piece will be with check valves. And we'll, we'll show you what happens when there's check valves installed. And the last is with a safety device here, a flashback arrestor. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I've already set my torch. With the quick connectors that I have on here, I was able to set the torch to just a basic mixed fuel gas operation. And then I can take the quick connectors off without having to turn the knobs on the torch. And so when I hook them back up, I still get that same mix. This will allow me to use the same mix for all three demonstrations. So once I do that, I'll put these back on. I don't need to light the torch, it's already been lit. I've got a neutral flame but I'll be able to pass that mixed gas through this line here, down through to the workpiece. We will ignite at the workpiece, whether it's from, and create a flashback, whether it's from running the tip into the work, a damaged tip, uh, settings being wrong on the torch, something, you know, something wrong inside with the mixer, anything that can create the back flow, the back pressure, and then the ignition. You have the, the flame going here at the source. So that can lead to a spark and ignition. So we're going to create that flashback. And what we want, want you to see is what happens as you go back upstream. Because anytime you get a flashback, the flash is trying to get back into the source where there's more supply of the oxy fuel gas. And it's going to go right back up the lines. So we'll be watching in the line what happens when you have a flashback uh, behind the operation side, especially with the different conditions, whether it's with protection with a check valve or with no protection. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what happens when we do this with no protection on the line. So what this would represent here is the torch at the workpiece with no flashback arrest, there's no safety device on the torch. So when somebody is operating at a workpiece, the, the flashback is created, what happens in the line when that happens? So as you can see in that demonstration, without any protection on the torch, at the point of use, any mixed gases that get ignited will go right back through 
pass the torch into the line behind, and you can see, you would see that through the crystal there, which each time we had a flashback, it went right back through into the line, and that would represent all the way back to the tank and hit into the regulators if you didn't have any protection on the regulators. So next what we're going to do is the same setup, everything will be the same with the exception of instead of not having any protection on the torch, for example, we're going to use a check valve. Check valve is a one-way valve that allows the gases to flow in the proper direction. Any back pressure or negative pressure on the valve will shut the valve so gases won't be able to travel back up the line. The problem with the check valve is that's all it can do. It can only stop back flow. If that gets ignited to the point where you get that ignition and you hear that boom and it's breaking the speed of sound, it moves too fast for any check valve and it goes right past. The check valve just shuts, but the flame, ignition of the flame will go right past it. So what we're going to do is the same setup. In this case, you know, I've got five check valves set up here in a row. Normally you just do one. Five doesn't do any more than just one check valve, but we do this just for demonstration purposes. You have five times the normal protection to see what happens. So let's set this up. see there with even five times the protection on check valves every time that flash went right back through them into the line behind the torch back to the source of supply so again that's with five times the protection those check valves still work they work fine but they can only stop the reverse flow of gases once those get ignited you get this explosion you get the situation with the flashback well that's why we always say you have to know the difference between a check valve and a flashback arrestor. When it comes to the safety side of the flashback arrestor, all flashback arresters have the check valve built in. So if you put a flashback arrestor on the line, you take any check valves you have off because they won't provide any more protection. They're just going to cause more restriction. But then when you put the flash arrestor on, you have the check valve. And in the case of the flash arrestor, it adds the flame barrier. The flame barrier is what acts like a heat sink. It protects the check valve, it's around the check valve, and it keeps that flame from hitting the check valve. In the previous demonstration, when that flash hit the check valve, the flame of the check valve went right past it. When you add the flame barrier around the check valve, it keeps that flame from hitting the check valve. So then when it just becomes gases, then the check valve can do its job. You get that negative pressure and it'll shut, and it's fast enough to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the check valves off, put the flame arrestor on, the flashback with the flame arrestor on there, and do the same demonstration. saw there is the exact same setup with everything, all three of the demos. The only difference was you did not see the flash get past the point of, point of use torch into the line. Everything else was the same. The flashback came back into the unit. Instead of hitting the check valve, like in the previous demonstration, it went and hit the flame barrier, the outside of the flame barrier that's inside the flashback arrestor. It acted like a heat sink. It absorbed that temperature of that flame, dropped it below its auto ignition temperature, and then the residual gases that are left after the flame goes out can be stopped by the check valve. It's simply like throwing a bucket of water on a campfire, you put out the fire, you get a bunch of residual gases and smoke. In this case, when you get that in a pressurized line, the check valve inside will stop that. Then once the pressure builds back up on the supply side, it'll purge the line back out. That's why a flashback arrestor can take multiple flashbacks. That's why you saw here we did flashback over and over again. The gas was then flowing in the proper direction between each each time so that you could get the flow again and have a situation where you can get another flashback. So that's where the flashback arrestor comes in and covers the, you know the safety and that's why we recommend a flashback arrestor on the 
point of view side with the operator because you're protecting the operator right at the work and then in back on the regulators because you're protecting the source of supply and as well as the regulators. So it's, it's you protect all the way through the line. 